Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We will hear more about them later. Hello and welcome to a video all about postpartum meal prepping. We're gonna freeze some meals today and I am, yeah, this is something I genuinely need to do because I'm due to give birth in just a few weeks. You might actually be watching this after I've given birth, but that's okay. This meal can be helpful for anyone who needs to meal prep for any reason. I'm trying to batch as many videos as possible so I don't have to work like freaking postpartum, okay? Today we're gonna make a little bit of a variety. We're gonna make a casserole dish because I only have one casserole dish, I actually had to buy one because I didn't even have one. We're gonna make some lentils, we're gonna make uh, some soups, and also a snack, at least one snack. I wanna have a lot of snacks on hand because when you're breastfeeding, you're just kind of hungry all the time. It's nice to have something healthy and it's just harder to make it when you have a newborn, so it's nice to have it all made. I'm fairly new to freezer meals. Um, I've frozen some meals. The big thing you really need to do, if you are freezing in any container, but especially like a glass jar, just make sure you don't fill it all the way to the top, otherwise it will burst and you know shatter in your freezer. So make sure you fill it, there's normally a fill line if you're using a mason jar, it'll tell you like a freezer line, just don't fill it up all the way. And err on the side of caution. I am going to be experimenting with something two years ago, three years ago Hannah never would have done. <laughs> I'm gonna be using plastic bags. I know they're it's not as sustainable. And the reason is um, these meals will be in my freezer for two, maybe three months, and I can't afford to be without my containers. And I'm always running out of jars, so I actually have to use something that um, I don't need in the meantime. Not to mention, things tend to store a little bit better in the plastic bags, just like space wise I don't have a garage fridge or anything so we're just gonna make the most out of our space another thing is don't try to make everything at once if you're like I need to freeze meals for postpartum or any other type of need that you have if you're trying to just like batch it all and do it all in one day you're gonna be exhausted it's just it's exhausting to just be on your feet cooking all day long so I really recommend just like freezing like making something for dinner and freezing half of it because it's gonna be super efficient and you won't actually have to do any extra work you can either double batch it depending on like the size of your family or freeze half of that normal size portion and it's just gonna be very efficient and you're not gonna be burnt out another thing when picking meals that you're going to freeze ahead of time is you wanna pick meals that you don't need any other ingredients for. You can literally thaw them, bake them, um, cook them on the stove to reheat them or whatever it is, and that's the meal. And maybe some additional like rice or something because we are gonna make lentils because you don't wanna to have to plan ahead and like go to the store to get those extra ingredients to complete the freezer meal. Um, rice, I feel like everyone always has rice on hand, so that's sort of an exception, but you know what I'm saying? You want it to be a meal in and of itself, so there's no extra thought involved. There's a couple things you don't wanna freeze, like one example is noodle dishes. When you freeze them and then reheat them, they don't tend to have the same texture, so keep things really simple veggie soups, lentils, things like that, and it's gonna be tastier in the end. And then the next thing I wanna say is if you are postpartum, or again, like if you're preparing for like an injury or a surgery or something like that, and you know you're gonna need some meals on hand because you will be a little incapacitated for a few weeks, I highly recommend starting a meal train. I know that's not meal prepping or freezing, but let your community support you. We are having a meal train, um, starting meal train when we have our baby and I already have so many people on my list who are gonna bring me a meal and it's, people love to help is the thing. People always offer like, hey, let me know how I can help and don't let that be in vain. Give them the link to your meal train and don't just like rely on yourself because it is a lot of work bringing a baby into this world. So that is the end of my tips. Let's get into the recipes. The first dish we're making today is a creamy green enchilada casserole from my favorite recipe blog, From My Bowl. I've yet to pull this out of the freezer, but it looks super delicious. I debated about whether to bake this before freezing or not, and then I just decided not to. I believe the rule of thumb is that if you have animal flesh in your dish, you should definitely bake it before you freeze. But since we obviously aren't dealing with animal flesh in this video because we're making vegan food, I thought it made more sense to freeze first and bake later on the day we're planning to eat it. You guys can go ahead and tell me your thoughts. I don't know if I made a mistake here. <laughs> 
You're basically just going to saute your veggies and beans for your filling and blend up an easy creamy green sauce and start layering this with some corn tortillas, kind of like a lasagna. I ended up using another can of beans for the filling because I was running out and the recipe calls for an optional sprinkle of vegan cheese on top and I'm really not much of a fake meat and cheese girl but I happened to have some vegan cheese in the fridge that I wanted to use up so I put that on and there you go. I just put the lid on and popped this in the freezer and I feel like Eric in particular is really going to appreciate this meal when we are in the throes of newborn days. Now let's make Josefa's lentil recipe. Josefa is one of my sister's best friends and also a friend of mine. She has this simple one pot lentil recipe that we have all been making for years now. This recipe literally has everything I'm looking for in a dinner recipe. It's one pot, easy to make, has affordable ingredients, and is super nutritious and delicious. I like to serve these lentils over some jasmine rice with avocado and sriracha on top. This recipe does make a very large portion, so we ate this for dinner the day I made it and then kept some for leftovers the next day and froze the rest for postpartum days. Next up is this super easy chickpea cauliflower curry from Minimalist Baker. This will be another recipe we can easily heat up and serve over rice, quinoa, and or greens for a fast and delicious dinner. Cauliflower is one of my favorite vegetables and chickpeas are one of my favorite legumes, so I'm really excited to heat this up on days I just don't have the time or energy to cook. For our final freezer dinner, we are making this honestly kind of incredible soup. It's so simple, but so good. Again, from Minimalist Baker. It's so flavorful and nourishing, and I couldn't help but eat two big bowls of this as soon as I made it. The soup is called Creamy Tuscan Kale White Bean Soup, and it's basically like a veggie soup with creaminess and balsamic vinegar at the end. I used cashew cream instead of coconut cream and I'm obsessed with how this turned out. I wanna be all set and ready to eat a really warming and nourishing soup after I give birth and I think this is the one I'll want. And we can also share this with our midwife and her assistants too. The last thing we're prepping today is some carrot cake breakfast cookies from Faithful Plateful. I happened upon this recipe and I realized this is actually my friend's blog who lives here in Idaho and these turned out so good. Of course, we had to eat a few when we made them and it took a lot of self-discipline to freeze the rest because they were the perfect texture and sweetness and these will be such a great snack for me when I'm looking for something quick while I'm breastfeeding and I know my toddler is gonna love having these too. That's it for our freezer meals today. I hope this inspires you to get some vegan meals prepped and in the freezer, whether you're prepping to be on bed rest or you just wanna get ready for your normal busy week. And by the way, if you are ready to thrive on plants, I have a totally free training about how to make your vegan journey sustainable and effortless. And when you're ready to just set aside about an hour of your time to learn, click the link below.
This video is brought to you by Squarespace, my favorite website building platform that takes you from A to Z in the website building process without ever hiring a designer. Connect with your audience and generate revenue through gated members only content, manage your members, send email communications, and leverage audience insights all on one easy to use platform. Create a community on your Squarespace website with a fully integrated commenting system. Use their powerful blogging tools and manage inventory. Squarespace is my preferred platform because it's incredibly easy to use, fully integrated, and the result is a beautiful website that you can call your own. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Hannah McNeely to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.